And we are recording, so welcome everyone to episode 4 of the Anime Nomad Podcast, where today we will be talking about Keijo. And I am joined by my astounding uh, cast of friends and family and weird people. I'll let you decide which one is which. Uh, so we'll go around and introduce everyone. Abi, introduce yourself. Where can we find you? You can find me at Visual Evaluations. And yes, my name's Abi. And we also have Astro here. You can find me at Astro325 if you want to look at nothing. Yeah, Astro has the most <laughs> active channel ever. And then we have uh, C-Tactics. I'm also very unactive, but you can find me over at <laughs> youtube.com forward slash the C-Tactics. <laughs> Very nice. He posts like once a month. Maybe once every two months. And yeah. we also have the very special Conda Fiction. Yeah, hello. Um, my name is Conda Fiction. You can find me at youtube.com slash uh, rising sun reviews. Um, yeah, go there. <laughs> very, very good channel. Uh, like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, it's the best channel ever. Yeah, for sure. Ring, r- ring that motherfucking notification bell. Yeah. Can we curse? <laughs> uh, sure, just don't do too much. <laughs> Wait, no, it's going to be demonetized. No. My channel's already demonetized, I don't care. <laughs> oh. But, yeah. What are we talking about today, you guys? So today we'll be talking about the greatest anime ever, and that is Keijo. Woo! So Keijo was my pick after we had the wonderfully special Kings game last month, where you can check out that <sighs> podcast over on Condi's channel. Yeah, remember, that's Rising Sun Reviews. That's my channel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll put the link in the description. Okay, so... So Keijo, if you don't know, it is by uh, Studio Zybeck, who is known for doing fan service and science fiction spaceship shows. This is not a science fiction spaceship show. I wish. Yeah, uh, Ryzen, you're not pronouncing the exclamation points in the title. Yeah, we need ex- exclamation points. If I don't have there, just <laughs> all, everyone just like and subscribe from Condi, that is. So what you're telling me is the studio that made this is scientific fan fiction. No. But yet Keijo has no scientific <laughs> boobs. I am disappointed now. Exactly. Keijo would be better if it was also science fiction because that would make it even weirder. They're fighting with their mind powers using their button boobs. I mean, how else can you explain the, the gates of Budilon? Yeah, so if you have not seen this show, it's basically about these girls who play a fictional sport called Keijo where they fight each other with their boobs and butts trying to knock each other into the water. It's basically like wrestling, except it's nothing like wrestling. Exactly. It's like sumo, because you have a ring. That's pretty much it. Yeah, so a question for everyone. What was your expectations going into this, and did those expectations change as you got further along? I mean, I'll start. I mean, I'll start. All I expected was boobs, but damn it. Who's going? (laughs) This is well scripted. Abby. Abby, go. You're first. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Um, So, I kind of expected just fan service, but it was a lot better of a shonen than I expected it to be. I mean, obviously, it's, it's still flawed, but, uh, it was a lot better than I expected it to be, and it had the fan service I expected, so, uh, good show. <laughs> yeah, and I expected it to be, like, a stupid fan service show. Yeah. I got a stupid fan service show, but at the same time, it was also a shonen sports anime, so that was cool. Yeah, um, someone else go? I had no idea what to really expect of it, but I certainly found it interesting the more we went into it. All right, uh, see, what did you think? Uh, well, okay, so I went in... I was expecting fan service with with like lollies and and just really like in bad taste fan service kind of. But what I got out of it was something that was surprisingly fun. It has some nice references in it and a very competent show all things considered. Yeah. yeah. It's in Condi, are you still awake and so what did you think? Or what did you or what are your expectations? What? Well, my expectations were lots of boobs and butts, and I was not left disappointed. So, I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're good there. Um, uh, Yeah, as everybody else said, you know, you got some sports, but I don't give a shit about that. I just wanted tits. <laughs> so, I mean... Well, I'm glad to hear you were satisfied. Yeah, I'm pretty satisfied, you know? Yeah, Um, if you're in between about 13 and 17, watch this show. Yeah, exactly. It's perfect for you. Yeah. I wish I found it then. Did you show it to your brother? Oh, I should do that. <laughs> Before we move on from this, I do want to say all the characters in this show are 18 and above. Yeah, so there's no lollies here. Well, so it's pretty hot. Or if so, they're legal lollies. Yeah. Some hot stuff, there. It's pretty hot. Got some nice, 
Got some nice of age women. Right. If you want to feel it for the show, just watch the OP, and you'll kind of know what you're getting. There's just watch the first episode. Yeah, first episode kind of says it all. Yeah, it certainly says something. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think of the abilities, and are there any abilities that you guys like thought were your favorite? I think I think that answer for everyone is going to be no. a vacuum butt cannon. No, I disagree. Yeah, I, I'm with uh, Hobby. Yeah, you're right. You guys are fate nerds. Exactly. <laughs> No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, the Gates of Booty Line is obviously my favorite because of the Fate reference. And what I liked about that especially was that not only did they, like, take or rename the ability after it, but they got all, all into the themes like fakes versus the originals and the candy copy surpassed the, um, what it was copying. So that, I just thought they went all out in that reference and it was cool. It was also like it was the most underdog of the character who they didn't expect anything <laughs> from and she just pulled off such a absurd over-the-top move. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to go off Rising, that was awesome. The dialogue and that scene, I was cracking up the entire time Rising knew. Because <laughs> it was just, just a fate, it was just a, just a fate UBW reference the whole entire time. Like, a giant reference. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Abby was busy with school that week when we were watching this, so I was like, no, Abby, you have to be here for this episode, no <laughs> so matter <I> what. <laughs> yes. It binged 30 episodes in a night. Even though this only has, like, 12 episodes. I wish. Yeah, this, this needs a season 2 even though it doesn't need one. It needs a season... It needs a... It needs a season 2, like, FLCL style where they just have new characters. I think it could just continue on, honestly. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess there was after that. Yes. My, uh... My favorite move was the, uh... Whenever Sayaka would do, like, the... Like, the nipple Oh, stuff. like the nipple blade? Because <laughs> I, I was shocked every that single time. That looks painful. <laughs> She flashed. She flashed her parents. And then obviously, I'm just looking at that and I'm imagining it's like that was yeah. real painful. <laughs> like both, bo- uh, both of the goods. Yeah, that's right. Clamshell and the, and the balls. Yeah, wasn't she the one who like throw? What were you saying, Rasmus? Yeah, because like didn't she just throw her uh, bikini up to block the sun for the one attack? Was that Saika? I don't know. It was one of the characters. I thought, I thought that was Catgirl. Yeah, she threw her top up into this guy. Yeah, the, the Okay, yeah, that could be. Whoever the super fast one was, oh. that's who it was. That's not, no, other fast one. Yeah, so, so did, like, the absurdity of the abilities or the unrealisticness uh, hurt the show or help the show, do you think? Agreed. Definitely helped it. I would agree. Without yeah. a doubt. The, the sound effects were great, too. Oh, the sound effects were very unfortunate. Oh, yeah. They sounded like giant farts. Okay, well, only the only the dog one bugged me, but the rest were awesome, like the gunshots. Oh yeah, the gunshots, yes, that made the show. Yeah, but the dog one sounded kind of uh, uncomfortable. So the... <laughs> it was um, an interesting sound effect. They, it sounds like they just had a rubber balloon and they were just rubbing it like. And it's like, oh please, why? Spare spare me of my of these noises. <laughs> so. <laughs> After this, are you guys open to more fan service shows, or does this change your opinion on fan service shows in nope, general? Not at all. Still hate them, but I will only watch fan service shows that have something that offer more than just fan service. That has to be a prerequisite for me. If it's kill a kill style fan service, then I might be open to it. But if it's just high school DXD fan service, hell yeah. my first trigger show. Oh no, actually that's wrong. Yeah, kill a kill will be fun. Yeah, my thought is, like, I th- can see some fan service shows just being fun, but a lot of times it's like there's so much fan service and not enough fun to make it worthwhile. Yeah, it was like, uh, A Sister is all you need. Like, there was a ton of fan service in there, and it was like, it was more than they needed to get the comedic effect. So, I didn't like it that much. Well, I think KJO used fan service to its advantage. Right, it did. Really well, yeah. Definitely. So, I was totally fine with it. And I'm more open to fan service shows just because I laughed a lot. It used it when it was necessary. Yeah. I think there are like a couple times where the fan service seemed to be too much, but most of the time, you're right, it was it was there to make the show more fun, and it worked there. So what did you guys think about the um, the video game CGI, or or especially at the end of the series with the tube platform? Wait, what those you platforms think about all CG? of that terrible CGI? I didn't even notice. <laughs> yeah, so I am I guess I'll say I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice. I was. Yeah, they were. Um. Well, I mean, 
It was one of the platforms, the one that was basically just a bunch of tubes and stuff, like... I mean, it wasn't horrible, but it wasn't awful. Wait, was that the airplanes? Yeah, or? the final battle was the CGI one. No, no, airplane. well, it, probably airplanes were CGI, I don't know, I didn't really pay attention, but, like, the ones where it was a bunch of just, like, tubes, and that's all they were on, right? The jungle gym style is what it was. I may have not been looking at the ground when I was watching Keijo, just to... Wow, Avi. Maybe. No, you were looking at their boobs. Understandable. With some many <laughs> boobs around there. It's, You're not worried about land Yeah, the airport more important things. We were watching the dub, so we didn't look at the bottom. <laughs> so what do you guys think about the dub, then? Since I'll be bringing it up. Dub was pretty yep, good. good. I mean... It's definitely not bad. Seeing how I mostly watch dubs... I'm wondering if the voice actors knew what they were getting into when they like auditioned for it or agreed to do it. I'm certain they did. I think when I listen to this dub, I listen to people that are having fun, not people that are hating it. So right. it's definitely, I feel like the dub turned out better than it probably the theory should have because the voice actors were just going to have fun with it and they, and it was an easy job probably. It's a shonen. They're fun. They enjoyed how stupid what everything they were saying it's like was. It kind of reminded me of the um, one anime where it's like they don't even take the um, line seriously anymore. It's just like, oh yeah, here's basic points of what to follow. Besides that, just go nuts. Yeah, I'm wondering like how creative they got with the script too. If it if they like translated directly and just said the absurd things, or if they came up with new ideas on top of it. I'd probably say a little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. I don't doubt it. Funimation is known for. Um, making their dubs unique by having things that are dub only so that the uh, English viewers can enjoy the anime. Which yeah. some people hate, but to me, I think that's awesome. Yeah, it's like, I'm English, so I want English dubs. Exactly. So, exactly. I like English shows better than Spanish dubs because of that. I like my Latin dubs, personally. Yes, you speak Latin, apparently. What did you guys think about the characters? Sayaka, best girl. Fuck you, fight me. Saika is, is like the best character. She's not just the best girl. Yeah, that's a fact. She is the best character. <laughs> and she is the main character. Probably. Are there any male characters that matter? No, I don't think I remember seeing a single one. Wait, the dad. The dad, I guess the dad exists. <laughs> but like he's no husbando, you know? I think my favorite was the Gates of Booty Long Girl just because like she kind of had some internal struggles and stuff. Yeah, that was early on. I remember that. There's a lot honestly, you could say that a lot of the characters are kind of basic shonen kind of archetypes. Yeah, they are. I think that's to the show. When you technically pick the character that you had the favorite power from, wouldn't you technically be kicking her? Because she can copy any of them. Yeah, so she's all of them, so she's the best. She's everyone's favorite. Okay. Can we? We're talking full spoilers, or...? Uh, Sure, why not? I I mean, what would you expect from a podcast talking about the anime? Well, I was just... The Gates of Booby I loved it, but I wish he like launched him like Gilgamesh does. But I don't know. They didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty yeah. uh Haha, <laughs> prepare to taste the friend of my ass or the the haste of my ass. Oh wait, maybe it's someone else's. I don't know. Prepare to taste it, that's all I know. Well, I think they were trying to make it like somewhat realistic in that yeah. they were picturing her copying the power, so it makes more sense to do it that way as opposed to her launching them. Yeah, that makes sense. It just would have so much more hype. <laughs> yeah, she somehow managed to or like as she was uh, throwing her butt at them, it was like it was as if they were all being uh, fired at them. If that oh, makes yes. any sense, yeah, I remember that. they could have done it that way. There was another comment with the dub, which I just thought about, is that like at the first couple of episodes, they made a point of the characters having accents, but then they were gone afterwards. Uh, well, the sudden accents. Yeah, they gave them accents and didn't do much else with them. They they do have like for example the Texas girl yeah I really liked her the one who play, who's played by uh, Toru Sarah Widenhef I believe no it's a, she has yes. like a hint of it but then after that like they sometimes like like don't ha- like they they just remove the G from certain words and that's about it I thought yeah. Kamenashi had a little bit of an accent the entire way through she did well, she but did. yeah it was subtle but it was never relevant to the plot like the others were which was strange i thought uh, yeah, i think the white-haired girl had a bit of an accent and then it was like uh-huh. saika's got a little bit more consistent as time went on but uh starting out it was like hey yo i'm southern and then right. it was like normal for like three episodes and then Wait, it started to build upon that saika yeah. yeah. She had an accent? Had she was able to hide it for the first half of the episode, and then she started doing more of it, but... I need to look up the characters, I forgot their names. 
There's a couple that have an accent. Yeah, like Alba and uh, uh, Known were the ones who had the big ones. Alba? Oh, yeah. Uh, Known sucks. <laughs> I'll put that out there. <laughs> isn't, that, is, isn't that Thick Girl? Yeah, that's just... That's just red. Do thick girl's best. It, yeah, she, 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 she didn't do anything. She doesn't even have a move. Except for maybe, like... She's... Who is this? Is that she's so thick, people get caught in her thickness. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, weird. no, that was pretty much it. That's literally she, what it is. No, she was, like, the one guy in um, My Hero Academia. This is the best way I can put it. She's able to nullify their power. She just kind of stopped them, and they bounced them off. Oh, a racer head. Yeah, the racer head. Well, I mean, he gets rid of their power. She just kind of stops them. They just bounce off of it. Say, like, uh, what? She must have implants, because nothing's that bouncy. Okay, so back to my list of questions, and I have, like, two left. Oh, uh, after this, so does this make you want to watch High School DxD? Mm, no. Oh, hell yeah, dude. High School DxD is nothing like this. Why would what you assume I haven't seen that? it yet? Um, but that, no. <laughs> you assume I haven't seen High School DxD? No. Oh, uh, yeah, Astro watched it all last time, I'm sure. Uh, oh, not certain, yeah. No, that's Monster Masume. Oh, okay, he watched that too. No, I just clicked the link and I realized what it was. I very quickly clicked off the link. <laughs> I realized what I was watching. Here's a question mainly for Condi. Which show is better, oh, yeah. uh, Keijo or King's Game? <laughs> is that even a question for him? That's a good question. Oh, damn it. For Condi, it's um, King's Game, but for everybody else, it's... What are you talking about? No way, man. I'm uh, I'm actually pretty impartial to King's Game and Keijo. Let's talk about High School DxD more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. Why did you add him to this? <laughs> oh, I do wonder if I can ask a question. Uh, what was your favorite show so far? Now that we've done that, now that we've done four, so we've rotated through the entire cast. You actually p- took my last question. Oh, whoops. <laughs> yeah, it was who picked the best anime so far. <laughs> I mean, I think hands down it was me, without a doubt. Um, anybody with real taste in anime. Hands down, you're lucky you didn't get kicked from the podcast. <laughs> no, please, just fucking kick me already. <laughs> Maybe he was trying to get kicked. Yeah, Con- Connie's going full demo here. He was trying to get kicked and it backfired. Yeah, well, I have to say, like, KJ was the most fun. Uh, Obvious was the one that surprised me the most. Kingsley was the one that was most memorable. And Hepatitis 1 was a show. Hepatitis. <laughs> was a show, yes. If you had to um, rank them, what would get last and what would get first? Well, King's Game's obviously last, yeah, it's not... Come on. <laughs> King's Game gets a solid six for everyone else. And first for Kanye. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely no taste with these people. Hyoka's not my favorite show or anything. Yeah, so we all know that Cage is better than Hyoka, so that's obvious. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm with you. Keijo is definitely above Yoko. Yeah, Yoka. see, Kondi agrees with me, so he must be right. Yeah. See? Yes, Kondi is right on everything, apparently. I gave Hyoka a 10 out of 10. My feelings are so hurt right now. I know, I know, right? Yeah, you gave it a 69 out of 4, dang. Yoka's. doesn't. it's not cutting it, you know? There's not enough boobs. <laughs> I mean, Chitanda, Chitanda has a large chest, according to the uh, director and the writer, so... I mean, we see it in the OVA. I mean, yeah, that's great and all, but, I mean, you can't... <laughs> There's only one episode where she's in a swimsuit. <laughs> what do you want from me? They're in a hot spring, too, one episode. <laughs> oh, that's right, two episodes. Still not enough. That's only two out of 24. It's 22. <laughs> so what, does the artist director go look down and he says it's Shush, huge? 23. Because <laughs> there's 11 and a half or whatever. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, Hyoka would be better if it had more action, so. <laughs> wow. Yeah, uh, for a pick that wasn't mine, Keijo's my favorite by far, but if we're including mine, then obviously Hyoka. Yeah, if we excluded my pick, then I would definitely say Hyoka was the best one because I liked it. I would say Hyoka, but I missed half of it, so, uh. <laughs> you can go watch it later. That's the problem, it's not grabbing me again, which is a sign I might not like it. Is there anything else? We could talk um, about with Keijo. Oh, really? It's such a silly. Would you Would you buy this anime on Blu-ray if it was on sale? If on sale, yes. What's on sale definition? How much is on sale? Like if it was like thirty or forty dollars, I'd probably would. Thirty or forty dollars, jeez! I buy it for like fifteen or twenty. Okay, see, Astro spent money on it. That's a good sign. Buy it for forty bucks. I can buy a decent game for that price. Dang. 
games suck. The animation has to be expensive. Well, my first thought was maybe it'd look better in Blu-ray, but then I realized that the animation wasn't that good that I think it'd make a difference, so I don't know. <laughs> it probably still looked better on Blu-ray. The thing with Blu-ray is the studio goes back and touches things up and makes do it look better. Do they all do that? Yeah, I wonder what yeah, Shioka looks like them. in Blu-ray, then. It's usually interesting. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Now, what's Shioka look like in 4K? <laughs> That's the question you should be asking. Obviously, I'm going to go buy Hyoka now to see. Well, it's on sale right now, so I might actually do that. How much is on sale for that? Uh, 25 for each half. Oh. So, 50 total? Also, yeah. also, anime and Blu ray looks fucking awesome. I don't know if you guys ever watch an anime uh, on Blu ray, but you need to. You have it. I bet Fate would look fire. Ooh. No, it has to. <laughs> I want to watch Apocrypha on Blu ray because of like how much is going on during that final battle. We're not even in the final battle. Yeah, I want to see UBW or Violet Evergarden on Blu-ray, and I'd just die. Violet Evergarden. So I saw they did Death Note, a live action of that. I wonder what My Hero Academia would look like live action. I think they're making one, if I'm not mistaken. They are? Oh, boy. I don't know, I could have sworn I heard something. Probably cheesy. This is a good KJ podcast. Matt Damon's... Yeah, now we're just doing a general <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Matt Damon's... <laughs> I like it. Oh. They should have Tom yeah. Holland as Midoriya. Just have it be everything. <laughs> so we should ask the viewers what other show they want us to cover because we like have a viewer choice one coming up next month. And so if there's a one they should want us to cover, they should leave it in the comments. I think that's how we're doing it anyway. Oh, we're still doing that? Uh, the easiest one to do, and this is not just because like it's on my video, but there's like already a bunch of there's a list on, on uh, looking up at the half moons. And you can go there and see a list. You can just upvote if there's something yeah. there that you If want. your trick isn't there, then you should leave it, oh. and then we will talk about it and say that's a terrible anime and you should never watch it again. I have a, um, a question for Kendra, right. actually. Okay. What? You expect it to respond? <laughs> Do you guys wish that the other characters other characters had more character development? Because it was mainly just Saika and maybe the Gates of Booty Long one girl. But, yeah. Alba... Why is Alba in this? Yeah, yeah, so Alba and Sayaka were the only ones with character Ow. development at all. I want I want a thick girl to get more thick development. I, in theory, yes, more character development would be good, but I don't know how needed it was when the show is not about the characters. Yeah, it was more about That's the, like... fair, but it was just jarring that only one had it, in my opinion. Yeah, it would have been better if it had it, yeah. Now, here's the real question. Season 2, yay or nay? Yes. Yes. I yay. think I could use a season 2. Yes. Here's another question. Here's another question. Yes. Season 3, yay, yay or nay? Mm. Yeah. Maybe. Season 4? Do they have enough material for no. four seasons? <laughs> Keep it going. <laughs> I don't know if they have enough for two. <laughs> oh, so uh, should we go read the manga now and do a podcast about the manga for Keijo? But I don't like reading. Only if we read the uh, Hyoko Light novel. Okay, never mind. Then. <laughs> no, but I'd actually consider reading the manga now. I never thought about that. Maybe I'll yeah, do that. that. Could be Maybe. Fun. Yeah. I'm curious how well the manga would work because, like, the, a lot of the fun of the anime scene did all them do everything. So I think the manga being static panels might make it harder, though. I don't know. Though I doubt it's been officially translated into there, English. Their boobs and butts probably look better in the manga. Because it's still frames. So oh, it's hell fun. yeah. Still frame yeah. boobs and butts. Add that to my fucking fat bank. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. We just don't have to be demonetized now. It's hard to demonetize anyway. <laughs> I thought you said you weren't getting... Exactly. We're all fired from... Don't you only you. make like four cents? I don't make any sense anymore. Yeah, you never make any sense. Get out of here. Exactly. I, I don't make sense. Not that kind of sense. The monocle term. I don't make any kind of sense. Exactly. Well, then how do you have an apartment? I have a condo, not an apartment. There's a difference, kind of. Exactly. We're not here to make sense, Astro. No. We're not talking about sense. We're talking about sense. Oh, how we sense this great show and everything about it, and then have dreams that we, too, play Keijo. Yeah. These manga covers are great. Honestly? So if Keijo and Free were combined, what would it be like? I'd watch it. The best thing ever. Keijo and Free. Okay, so. <laughs> yes, Keijo and Free combined. What would you no, say? No, I don't want that. 
I like having my uh, I want it. My guy stuff somewhere else, my girl stuff and other stuff. <laughs> wow. I did more meant nice. like the styling of okay, Oh no, wait. That oh, if too. you any did Kjo, I would buy that. <laughs> Not mm. that would be Oh amazing. my god, yes. It's hard to describe. <laughs> but it's Violet Evergarden level. That would be of, of I would cry. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, I have another question. If what? you were a character in Kaja, what would your special attack be? Vacuum butt cannon! It's the Kamehameha of the series. Uh, I think oh, I prefer okay. to call the Rasengan of the series because I'm not a pleb. <laughs> wow. What a fucking pleb. <laughs> Ouch. Well, I would just uh, be the Sharigan or the Mako. <laughs> Somehow combine those together. Yes. I mean, Sharigan could work, it's just... Yes, I will trap you in my mind forever. Oh, oh. It's like what you see the music, the other person collapses. What was the Sharigan equivalent in this show? What were you... Was there one? Uh, it's kind of like the Gates of Elon to copy things. Oh, but... and then also there's the hy- hypnosis yeah, Doesn't girl. the Sharigan just kind of like put you in an alternate the world Sharigan or something? The Sharigan does everything, Astro. <laughs> the Sharigan is like... It's OP as crap. It it does everything. It can make your food. I like it can rising sleep. in the middle of all of us talking, going, and it sets stuff on fire. You guys, <laughs> it well, does. That's the, right that's the get cute, but yes, it can do that. It, it still yep. counts. They're all the same, pretty much. Oh, actually, another question: What do you think? What do you think of the blonde girl? Like the really uh. Clo- the OP one. Yeah. Well, yeah, the one that got really close to girls. <laughs> The lesbian? I thought she was great. Like her. Yeah, um, you're the real touchy yeah. one. The almost the molesting one almost counts as rape. Probably does. Yeah. Roach just like turning on those two twins in the middle of the match. Uh, remember the part where uh, in the show when when they like like duel each other and like the one of the girls starts vibrating the other. Yeah, Is that I the think same that was. Girl? Yeah, I think that well, was yeah, her. I think. She- and then she literally orgasms and loses the match. Yeah, the, the twins <laughs> orgasm, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Well, no, they weren't really doing... Well, okay, they seem to be enjoying it, that's for sure, because the moaning, but they didn't fall off yet. She had huge moves. Yeah, she did. Did she grab ass a lot, too? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. yeah she grabbed like, the ass. first episode, she was just, like, feeling up all the girls <laughs> as they came into the school. And she doesn't even have the copy ability. That's a fair point, actually. <laughs> What's the point of it if you don't have it? You'd think Alba would do that. <laughs> Now you're just a pervert. She did when she gave everyone a back massage. She went for their butt, and next thing you know, they have their powers. So if you need to steal people's powers, give them butt massages. It's like a finger slides in. Oh, I don't know. Oops. Also, Abby, it's worth mentioning that Amagi Brilliant Park probably has close to the same levels of production of Violet and its fanservice. Um, okay. Okay, I, I know what I'm doing tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Abby's going to binge all of the Violet Evergarden. I already did that, yeah. That was a good binge. He's going to redo it. Oh, that'd be a good podcast pick of Maki. Ooh. I, 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 told, I think I told you that the other day, Abby. I was like, Abby, I think yeah, I may say okay. this for the podcast. No, I mean, you, if you, you pick it, that, then yeah, I, sure. I've, because I have a, I have some weird picks at the moment. Yeah, well, free or car no Kyokai. <laughs> I'm not still not sure yet. Maybe Senra Kagura. Those mm. between those three. You haven't picked an anime yet. Okay, so we've been going for half an hour, and I think we're all out of topics. So, anything else? So, okay. So, overall, final thoughts on the show. Oh, I can't think of any at least. I give it like, you know what? It may be a little generous, but I think I've spent enough time of the way with the show. To give it the score, and I think I'm gonna give it a seven. I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. Yeah, good score. I'm thinking close to a seven, maybe a seven and a half, something like that. I'd say it's like pretty solid seven because it's a show I enjoyed from beginning to end, even though nothing about it stood out as amazing except for the Gates of Booty Lawn. So, yep, seven for me. I might give it a seven and a half or an eight just because I had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> yep, that literally sums up. I was gonna say seven too. Yep, yeah, so the whole uh, podcast thinks it's a good show, and it's therefore it's better than Hyoka. No, Hyoka is too good! Oh. Absolutely. I gave Hyoka a five. Wow. Yeah, wow. Awful Party. show. Mm. Just awful. Get out. Why do we. Why do I allow this trash talk of Hyoka? 
It's because you love it so much. It's like Rising uploads a video and just mutes Condi's audio. Why don't I hear him? I might actually like this. Alright, and yeah. So I think that's the podcast. Thank you everyone for watching and for laughing at our stupidity. Um, Everyone say your outro. Where can we find you? And all that good stuff. I'll be first. Okay, I will. uh, You can find me at Visual Evaluations. I I plan on posting very soon, but... (laughs) finals are coming up so i can't promise that but i do edit videos for rising sometimes so check out his channel which you're already on yes if the videos look like they're edited by someone who knows what to do it that's probably by avi i I guess either avi or mighty pie mighty pie is too busy with his own or my sister when she actually gets me stuff all right um astro um i'm astro 325 on youtube um and i plan on posting rather soon so subscribe, notification bell, so you get them when I do <laughs> post, if ever. It, um, the great C tactics. Uh, that's great. actually Condi. Condi is the great Cond. So, but you can yeah, find me right. youtube.com forward slash C tactics FTW. I upload weekly content reviews and stuff, and like I, I'm covering spring 2018, like Sao, the new Sao, Steins Gate. Legend of the Lacta Heroes, Golden Kamui, and some other anime no one cares about. Yeah, uh, at least one of those is good. Yeah, probably maybe like a half of one is good. I don't even know. We don't even know. You have to find out by going over to my channel and subscribing right now. Condi, are you still awake? No. All right, that's it, everybody. Okay, so so I'll do Condi's outro. Uh, this is Condi. He <laughs> makes videos about Animu, and you should go follow him because he's hilarious and funny, and he's the inspiration to all of us. This is KJ. Wait, can we all can we all do like impressions of Condi for his outro? Yes. Yeah, sure, go Obby. for it. Let's let's see who has the I, best no, one. No, no, no. <laughs> do it, Abby. Abby, you gotta give it a try. Do it, Abby. I'm uh, I'm demo. Great impression. <laughs> oh, shit, that was pretty good. I'd give it at least a six and a half out of ten, honestly. He got the most work part right. You got the you got the soul of it, you know? The, there was soul in there. Let's, let's hear Astro, let's see it. I am Obby, I have great taste, everyone else is garbage, no matter what they say, come to my channel, oh, don't even go to theirs. Now, apparently I'm Obby now, well, holy... You said Condi. No, you said, said Obby. <laughs> I thought you said uh, you, you said Rewind it. Well. Go back to the tapes. <laughs> Rewind the tapes. Yeah, no, no. no, we're recording. I hope. Hopefully everything was recording. Otherwise, this will be a challenge. Oh, wait. We're supposed to be recording? No. I'll give it a 3 out of 10. No, that's me. I don't know. I mean, you had the voice, but I don't know if you really captured my character properly. <laughs> let's let's hear it, C-Tactics. I want to see what you got. Yo, what's up? My name's Conda Fiction. I'm here to bring y'all... Anime! Yeah! And you know, it's pretty good. Um, okay. Sounds like Gilgamesh. You, you definitely. See, that's my seat. I'm actually <laughs> by. So, I mean, that was the perfect one. <laughs> That'll be my C Tactics impression. Hello, I am C Tactics. What are you doing? That's wonderful. Anyway, and uh, I guess Rising, impression. if you want to do one too, let's see. <laughs> Okay. You know, I don't even know. It's like, it's like, well, it's the King's Game Awesome. It's 10 out of 10. Best show ever. 6.9 out of 4. Pretty good. There was a British accent in there, and that kind of confuses me. I'd give it at least an 8. <laughs> I didn't even mean to be British. <laughs> You've been around Garfield too much. And yeah, I'm Rising Sun Reviews. I hate all anime people think he's good, except Boku no Hero, and I post videos, so subscribe if you're not from this channel. Says the guy Hell, who isn't watching yeah. MHA Live. Right? <laughs> it's very tempting to. About that. Don't worry, I'll have like five videos when it's over. I was just trying to cause a flame war. <laughs> when he gets his internet back. <laughs> five minutes. Uh, no, it's got to be 60, 60 part series on why you like My Hero Academia <laughs> Season 3. I'm not doing another 12 part series. No, it needs to be 60 parts on why you like Episode no, 1 60. Season 2. It's 60 episodes. Yeah. Alright, thank you everyone for watching, and yeah. we'll see you next time before I agree to do any more weird things. <laughs>